Education meeting on 1422. And Happy New Year to all of you, and, and we're glad you could be here tonight. Mr. Holmes cannot be with us tonight, but he is with us virtually, I do believe. Um, and I hope I can do my job justice because Mr. Holmes has been a chair for many, many years. So I hope I can make Mr. Holmes proud tonight. Anyway, we're going to call the meeting to order. And if you would, please place all electronic communication devices on silent or vibrate. And we are going to have Mr. Brown give us the Griffin Spalding County School Spotlight. And this month it is Moreland Road Elementary School. So, Mr. Brown. Thank you so much, Madam Vice Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, we are here to celebrate our GSCS Board of Education Spotlight. This month's spotlight is to Moreland Road Elementary. Give it up. How many scholars attend your school? 468 in grades pre-K through fifth. What is your school mascot? We are the Mighty Mustangs. How many faculty and staff members work at your school? We currently have a total of 72 staff members. A quote from the principal as to why you love being the proud principal at Moreland Road Elementary. I am humbled and honored to serve as the principal of Moreland Road Elementary School. Together we will continue to grow and build strong leaders who make a difference in our community. We want to make sure every scholar finds a great success in their path of learning. High standards of achievement are the Mustang way. What are the good things going on at your school, socially and educationally? The 2021-2022 school year theme at Moreland Road Elementary School is Rock Your Roll. And teachers, faculty, and staff have been doing just that. Our staff return to school with a mindset of moving scholars forward. Our scholars are just finished showing tremendous growth on their mid-year MAP scores and are well on their way to being proficient and distinguished learners by the end of the school year. Our vision and mission is to meet the needs of all scholars through consistent and effective routes of communication with our parents, including Class Dojo, social media, Facebook Live events, weekly folders, class newsletters, email and text messages, and parent conferences. We are intentionally celebrating individual and school-wide success to include students' academic, social, and emotional learning through PBIS, we have daily afternoon announcements regard, regarding class attendance for the day and weekly celebrations around student attendance. We know that the number one key to determining student success is scholars being present at school each and every day. We also celebrate monthly as we look at our data results, school-wide academic celebrations at the end of each semester. 99.29% of our scholars just enjoyed December school ride map celebration for showing academic growth and reading and or math. Let's give it up for them. Woo. We included bingo for books, inflatables, and snacks. This was an event that sent every child home with a new book that was on their grade level according to Lexile. We also showcased students of the month for their hard work and dedication at Moreland Road Elementary by being well-mannered, responsible, and eager to do the right thing. Various technology resources are being utilized to increase student achievement, support our school improvement plan, programs such as USA Test Prep, Edgenuity, PALS, Reading and Math, My Access are being used school-wide at Moreland Road Elementary. Intentional and consistent weekly planning by teachers and staff help to ensure that every task placed in front of our scholars is rigorous and uses grade level text. Assessment data surrounding these programs help us to determine our next steps, adjustments to our daily lesson plans. Our Moreland Road Elementary Scholars receive daily second step lessons, which encourage inclusion, accepting differences, empathy, and putting ourselves on other shoes. Faculty and staff model these expectations through PBIS program, encouraging scholars to be well-mannered, be respectful, and eager to do the right thing. We have celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month, Red Ribbon Week, Bullying Prevention Month, and World Kindness Day in November. It is our goal to always ensure that scholars, faculty, and staff feel included and a part of the Moreland Road Elementary family. We are excited to be working with our community partners, including Oak Hill Church, Carver Road Baptist Church, Chick-fil-A, Collier's Closet, 
St. John Lutheran's Church. Not only do they help us with tangible items that help our scholars, they help us spiritually and emotionally as we make our way through this exciting year. We are proud to continue partnering with St. John Lutheran Church this year. They provide weekend meals to our students who are in need of additional food and their homes in our Backpack Buddy Program. Moreland Road Elementary is excited about our parent-teacher organization this year and has an active and supporting parents who are focused on providing positive experiences and fundraising opportunities to meet the needs of our school. The Moreland Road Elementary Administration is receiving in-person training with Ken Williams through the district initiative entitled Start with the Crown. This training is then redelivered to the school's faculty and staff, ensuring that we continue to be culturally competent school where we meet the needs of all scholars. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's give it up for Moreland Road Elementary. <laughs> Moreland Road Elementary, the principal, uh, any faculty and staff members, and the scholar, will you please join my colleagues and I to the front for a picture. Moreland Road is in District 3. Leader Holmes is not here, so I'm going to ask Madam Vice Chair to present the picture. Madam Vice Chair, that concludes my report for the School Spotlight. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I think it's worth noting again that 99.29% of students just enjoyed the December school-wide map celebration. I was going to ask, uh, Charlie, how'd you like Santa Claus coming in on that helicopter? Pretty cool, right? <laughs> I watched that on... Uh, the videos that Miss Garvin always posts, and that was pretty cool. I think I'd get excited about that. That's awesome. Congratulations, Misty. 99.2 is pretty cool. Thank you so much. All right, now we'll have our prayer and pledge of allegiance. Uh, we do have the Cr Cr Crankshaw family here. Uh, Charlie is a third grade student at Moreland Road. His sister is here, Natasha, who is a sixth grade student at Carver Road. And I'm going to ask Mr. Doss to do our prayer, and then Charlie will come up here and do our Pledge of Allegiance. All right, will everyone stand, please? Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come and do the business of Griffin Spalding County School System. Lord, we thank you for this particular school this night. Lord, these students that are here, we ask, Father, Lord, that you continue to bless them. Lord, we just continue to pray a prayer of hedge of protection and safety around all of our schools, around all of our community. Lord, as we uh, continue, Father Lord, to be diligent in the things that we know to do to help combat this sickness, and we pray, Father Lord, that your protection will be upon us. Lord, as we continue to do business this evening, we pray for your wisdom and your guidance and your direction. In Christ's name. Also wanted to recognize the Mr. and Mrs. Crankshaw who are here with their children tonight. Thank you for being here and thank you for supporting your children. 
uh, my conversation with Natasha, the sixth grader at Carver, she wants to be a bulldog, Mr. Shepard, and that's pretty cool. She's got that Georgia mask on, so uh, we hope that we can uh, celebrate a little bit next Monday night when they win the national championship. So appreciate, again, you guys being here, and um, thank you, Charlie, for, your, for doing that for us tonight. Next thing on the agenda is the uh, adoption of the agenda. Are there any additions or changes to the agen agenda before we adopt it? I make a motion for the adoption of the agenda. All right, motion to accept. Second. All right, and then we have a second motion by Mr. Doss and a second by Ms. Cook. Thank you. Take the vote. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Shepard. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, uh, four, zero. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder, Mr. Shepard. Next is our Griffin Spalding County School System announcing, announcements. Mr. Brown, please. Madam Vice Chair, thank you so much for the opportunity to present a scholar who is no stranger to our school district. Mr. Ethan Bearden is a scholar at Griffin High School. He has served in FBLA. He served in Key Club and many other different organizations. For those that may know Ethan, you may see him during band season as the drum major. And so I would like to present to you our scholar clerk, Mr. Ethan Bearden, with our 2022 January announcements. Good evening, everyone. Vice Chairman McDonald, members of the board, and Superintendent Simmons, my name is Ethan Bearden. I am a junior at Griffin High School. I would like to thank the Board of Education for involving scholars of the district in the policy and legislative process. The announcements for the January 4th, 2022 Board of Education meeting are as follows. GSCS virtual district-wide spelling bee will be held on Wednesday, January 12th, 2022 at 9 o'clock a.m. The Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday will be observed on January 17th 2022. GSCS schools and district office will be closed. On Tuesday, January 18th, 2022, the Griffin Spotting County Board of Education work session will be held at 216 South 6th Street, Griffin, Georgia at 4 o'clock p.m. Governance team, cabinet members, and stakeholders, this concludes the Board of Education announcements for Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan. Appreciate that. It's good to see you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you. All right, next is our recognitions, Ms. Uh, Barbara Jo Cook. Thank you. On the agenda tonight, we have Governor's Honors Program winners, Ms. Ashley Crawford. Good evening. Hello. I'm so excited to get to present to you tonight some of our outstanding students. And I know you're going to be excited to hear about these ladies that are here and um, some other gentlemen that just have not been able to make it this evening. So it is my pleasure in um, recognizing you, our Governor's Honors nominees from Griffin Spalding. And again, I will begin with those that are here. <clears throat> First, Jordan Silas, Griffin High School, the area of science. <laughs> Audrey Fair, Spalding High School, the area of music. <laughs> Anisha Area of dance. <laughs> Leslie Arredondo, Spalding High School, in the area of visual arts. Mm. <laughs> Ayla Spencer, Griffin High School, in the area of communicative arts. in the area of science.
recognize the other nominees who just could not be with us this evening. So this folder involves the district of West in it. Olivia Grace Owen, Spalding High School, Area of Visual Arts. Riley Newman, Spalding High School, Area of Communicative Arts. Jama Wilson, Griffin High School in the area of dance. Tristan Williams, Griffin High School, the area of mathematics. Harrison Whitmore, Griffin High School, in the area of communicative arts. Philip Scoggins, Griffin High School, in the area of science. Emma Devane, Spalding High School, in the area of visual arts. Kamaya Shannon, Griffin High School, in the area of visual arts, and Maya Yurik, Spalding High School, in the area of social studies. So if we could give that group a round of applause. <laughs> and I have to say, it would be virtually impossible for us to, to do Governor's Honors without the help of some wonderful staff members. I would like to recognize Melanie Underwood, or thank Melanie Underwood from Griffin High School and Mr. Christopher Dunn from Spalding High School for their help in this process. These um, students have completed their application and they had to submit it, I think, by midnight last night or this morning, and they've all done that. They assured me that's been done. So now if you could just join me one more time in wishing them the absolute best as their applications are now reviewed to see if they can move forward to the next round of interviews. That's great. And I'm not sure if the board wanted to take a picture with this outstanding group. Sure. Absolutely. And listening to them in the hallway, they are excellent. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Best of luck. parents to just kind of walk to the side here and take some pictures real quick. I see them with their cameras. Y'all want to come up and get a better picture? You're good? Come on. Don't be shy. It's a memory. Thank you too, parents, for what you do to support your students. We cannot forget the educators that work with them to prepare them for Governor's Honors as well. Absolutely. Congratulations to each one of you. As a former high school teacher, I know how competitive this process is, and I'm very proud of each of you. We look forward to hearing great things from you. You make us all proud, and we're very happy, and congratulate each one of you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Uh, thank you, Ms. Crawford, and uh, thank you, Ms. Cook. We appreciate that. At this time, we, I don't believe, Ms. Ray, do we have anyone signed up for public comment? Okay. And if you, uh, we'll take a short break. For those of you who would like to leave, you're welcome to leave or you're welcome to stay. That, that's totally up to you, but we'll, a uh, couple of minutes for you to exit if you so choose. Appreciate you being here. You're welcome to stay, though. We'll take a, like a two minute break and then we'll reconvene in two minutes.
Mr. Johnson. Secure because it, it'll, it'll go. <laughs> it's totally different. We can go riding out the hallway. Yeah. All right, at this time we'll come back together. Next on the uh, agenda is the election of board officers. We do this every January for the uh, entire calendar year, but because Mr. Holmes is not here tonight and could not be with us tonight, we are going to do that during the work session on the 18th of this month. So we're going to defer to the 18th to do that. Mr. Brown? Uh, parliamentary inquiry. Uh, should the agenda be amended and it be removed from the agenda? It should be. Okay. So do I hear a motion for this to be removed then? Madam Chair, I ask that we go back and amend the agenda to reflect that item six is removed until our work session. All right, all second. In, okay, we have a, a motion and a second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, four zero. All right, we'll remove that from the agenda for tonight and add it to our January 18th work session at four o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for that. No problem. Next is our consent agenda items. There are several personnel and uh, business action items doing, uh, doing with our, our policy reviews. M motion to accept. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept our consent agenda items. Please raise your hand, right hand if you agree. Motion is carried 4-0. Thank you.
Next are our action items. Uh, first is the touch math purchase for special ed self-contained. Mr. Kelly. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I, yeah, I'm, good. I'm here tonight to discuss the purchase of touch math instructional kits for special programs. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the purchase of touch math instructional intervention classroom kits for the 17 general curriculum and adapted curriculum self-contained classrooms at a cost of $72,236. Funding for this purchase will come from the American Rescue Plan supplement to the 611 IDA flow-through grant. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair, for recognizing me. Mr. Kelly, quick question. Yes. I know that it says that it will be in nine general curriculum self-contained classes and eight adapted curriculum self-contained classes. Can you tell me which schools are included in that? Sure. Uh, so I could start uh, uh, high schools. So that would be Spalding High and Griffin High School. Uh, the middle schools would be Rehoboth and Cowan. Uh, the elementary schools would be uh, Beaverbrook, Atkinson, Cowan Elementary, uh, uh, Oars, Futural, Crescent, and Ann Street. Okay. I have another follow-up question. Mr. Okay. Kelly, also, what training has the educators received in regards to um, this particular touch math kit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this purchase comes with an initial online module training, so that helps them get off the ground. And then they're going to receive additional training uh, pre-planning next year. So that's the actual face-to-face -face training. So this is to get them familiar with the system. It's not going to be a, a part of their required lesson at this point, so we want to get them familiar with the system, get it out into the hands of the, the teachers and the students, and then we're going to get a full one-day training uh, during pre-planning. All right. And I guess my last question would be, would, would be is, is there not a person on staff in Griffin Spalding, and maybe from instructional services that could do this training? Yeah, so actually I'm going to go out to those classrooms and other uh, district personnel that support them to help unpack the kits and actually get them started. Uh, TouchMath has an implementation plan. It's a, like a 25-page PDF, and that helps us support the teachers to get them started. Uh, and then the actual training itself, uh, it's a very uh, specialized kit, a very specialized instructional kit. So that's why we're having the, the company actually do the, the training with their specialized trainers. So there are other, so according to what you just said, there are other people training outside of yourself? Trained in this system? Yes. Within the district? No. 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 That's not. Okay. Yeah, I've used this, uh, the, the instructional program as a teacher myself. I'm not a trainer level type, but we're going to help them with the online training get started with it. Uh, and so, not to you, Mr. Kelly, but to the superintendent, is this something that instructional services could help out with? I can, Dr. Taylor. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. No further questions, Madam Chair. All right. Board members. No further questions. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. All right. Thank you. All right, do I hear a motion? Do we do these all at once or individually? Individually, individually. individually. Right? Is that correct? Okay. Correct. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion to accept uh, the purchase of the touch math for special ed self-contained classes. Mr. Brown made the motion, Ms. Cook second. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All right, we have a 4-0. Thank you. Next action item is uh, the district purchase of interactive panels. Mr. Harper. Uh, good afternoon, board. The uh, district is seeking to purchase 630 clear touch interactive panels from EdTech 12. Uh, part of this initiative, going back to the update with the strategic plan with bolstering instruction and breaking teachers away from their computers so that they can still provide the digital resources and interactions that they normally would, but now they can move around the classrooms and be interactive with the students as opposed to just being stuck behind this desk. 
Um, <clears throat> so it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the funding for the purchase of 630 ClearTouch interactive panels from EdTech 12 for an amount not to exceed $2,478,420 to be paid for from ESSER 3 funds. Any questions? Any questions, board members? All right, no questions. Do I hear a motion? So moved. A second? Second. All right, motion to accept by Mr. Doss, second by Ms. Cook. Uh, please raise your right hand if you agree. All right, 4 0, thank you. All right, the third item is uh, needlepoint bipolar ionization for Griffin High School air handling units. Mr. Akins, thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Vice Chair and board members, Mr. Simmons. Uh, this may sound familiar to you. Back in May, the uh, board approved uh, the purchase uh, of, um, uh, excuse me, uh, the district is seeking approval tonight to issue a purchase order to Mingledorf's Incorporated for $32,631 to obtain the GPS iMod systems needed for six larger units uh, at Griffin High School. Uh, Earlier in this year, in, in May, the board approved for us to purchase the um, needlepoint bipolar ionization units. There were six units at Griffin High, one here at the central office, that uh, were larger than all of the others, just a little bit different. They, they felt like at that time they could utilize multiple of the smaller units that we were purchasing in these larger units. As we've gotten into the work, um, the manufacturer as well as uh, the reps here uh, have determined that those are not sufficient uh, for those units themselves. So uh, it is necessary for us to purchase these larger uh, units to make these work properly. So uh, we're wanting to do uh, mingle doors because the original units were purchased from them. So to make sure that we are staying um, across the board, um, then we would like to do that. So it is recommended that the Board of Education approve a purchase order to be issued to Mingle Doors Incorporated for $32,631 to obtain the GPS iMod system needed for the six units at Griffin High School. Very Any quick. questions, board members? I would think, Mr. Akins, this has a lot to do with the uh, being fluid as far as What's the word I'm trying to use? Um, Consistent. Sticking with the same system because of... Um, Consistency of maintenance yes, and, that's, and everything no, across. That's, yes, ma'am. Thank you. That is, that is correct. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? No. All right. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Motion by Mr. Brown. Second. All right. A second by Mr. <clears throat> Doss. Please raise your right hand if you are in favor. All right, vote is 4 0. Thank you, Mr. Akins. Appreciate that. Next on the action items is the adoption of the re reapportionment resolution. Mr. Simmons. Thank you, Madam Vice Chairman. Jeff Person, sorry. It's okay. I, I yield uh, the remainder of my topic to the board's attorney, Mr. Shepard. Before you do that, Mr. Simmons, do we have a copy of that resolution? Uh, the uh, board vice chair does. You can. Look at a copy of that. Look at a copy of that. I've got two there. We're going to ask that y'all execute the Okay. All right, Madam Vice Chair, Mr. Simmons, uh, the board has before it a proposed joint resolution with regard to the reapportionment of the uh, board member districts as well as the county commission districts um, and just for the benefit of people who may be watching that are, aren't totally familiar with the way our districts run for 15 16 years or better the uh, ever since this board became a five member board the uh, school board member districts have been identical to the five county commission districts. Uh, both boards earlier, well, I'll start to say earlier this year, we're in 2022. Back in 2021, 
uh, both boards expressed the desire to uh, leave it that way, just for the benefit of the, the voting public. Uh, the county obtained a proposed uh, redistricting map from the uh, Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment Office up in Atlanta. Uh, this board had an opportunity to review the maps, found them satisfactory, or found the map satisfactory. Uh, back on December 14th, this uh, board uh, conducted a public hearing for the public to be able to come in, uh, review the maps, have comments on it. Uh, I understand that the county commission has done the same thing. Uh, both boards, both the county board and the school board, are, are now prepared to uh, consider a joint resolution uh, that would suggest to the uh, legislative delegation from Spalding County that they present the uh, map that's identified on the joint resolution to the legislature to be adopted so that we would comply with the requirements of reapportionment after each, cen uh, after each census. So you've got the joint resolution before you. Uh, if the board approves it, uh, I'm gonna ask that you execute it in duplicate and uh, we'll then uh, get it to the county. They will meet next Monday night and consider it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Questions or comments? Yeah, I mean, we've had many discussions and conversations about this. So we, before the holiday break, we met with the county, so to speak, the county attorney, the city man county manager, and the county chair. And so I, if we are doing it at this point, I would like to make a motion to accept. Okay, motion to accept. And I'll second. Mr. D motion to accept, Mr. Brown, second by Mr. Doss. All in favor, please raise your right hand. It passes 4 0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Next items would be our presentations. Uh, we have two tonight uh, one from Mr. Jones, the financial report. Good evening, Mr. Jones. Good evening. Thank you, Ms. Vice Chairman. Good evening, board members. Um, I'm going to attempt to navigate this real quick here tonight, new for me, but I think it'll work out good. Uh, again, just to remind you, shortened down version. I hope you got the long version to, to review at your leisure. This is a six-page version, and the first page is our balance sheet. Um, just a couple of comments again in yellow is our general fund, which again, to remind you, is our tax money and our state revenues. Uh, all that added up somewhere in the $90, $95 million range. You'll see, and this is through November, uh, the general fund reserve at this point is approximately $26 million. And again, that fluctuates up and down based on tax revenue collections. I mentioned this last month, and because we're delayed in how we report the board meeting, Ms. Ms. Sylvia gave us that tax check I talked about earlier, so we were able to fund those payroll salaries. And again, that's important with the, the uh, millage rate tax collections a little bit delayed. So again, if, if Mr. Holmes is listening, that call your reserve because of that way it is, we don't have to borrow money to make those obligations. So again, that's the reason that that uh, reserve stays the way it is. I'll point out on special revenue, which is the third column over, you'll see a negative in cash. I'll tell you that on page three again in a minute. That's another reason that those monies come out of the same bank account as the general fund. So when we have a delay in approval with the state, we can still fund those projects without a cash flow deficiency. Going on to page two, this is just the general operations of the general fund for the month of November. 30.31% on your revenue and your um, expenses of 30.05. And if you look at last year's, which is in your summary, page one on your big packet, you'll see those are trending in the way that we want them to versus the prior year. Uh, page three is your special revenue funds. And as I was saying a while ago, these are your grants state and federal grants and uh, we just had the title one budgets approved right the Christmas break we'll have a really large drawdown for that that we'll report the next time we're in here talking to you so again this report a little bit little, we'll look a little bit different next month uh, as I tell you about nutrition as you look at their revenues and in their expenses and their fund balance you know last time we the last year at this time we were really concerned about that with being virtual 
but the in-person and then the, the move to the uh, uh, adopted CEP program is really, he's almost at a million dollars in reserve right now already. So that, that's good and it'll allow him to do some flexible things, buying equipment, et cetera, as those needs present themselves. Uh, page five, again, investment register, and these are our uh, items that we're the fiduciary of, approximately $24 million there, and, and that includes your supply balances, et cetera, for cash at the end of November. And the final page is the annual or the monthly spost. Again, another million dollar deposit. So again, we've not dropped below a million since February, almost a year ago. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Again, so uh, really good news on that. Um, so that's the six pages. Any questions that I can answer for you all? This is through November. Mr. Jones, are we, uh, I believe the government, all children in America this particular academic school year are free and reduced. Is that correct? And then we go to CEP next academic school year? Well, we're, I believe, I believe we're under CEP now. I think it's the provision is, at, we approved it for, I think it's a four year cycle. Right. But everybody's under SSO, seamless summer option for this okay. year. Mm -hmm. There will be people with SSO ends that will not be under CEP, but we will. You, it'll be a mirror example okay. to All us. Right. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Any other questions, board members? All right, thank you, Mr. Jones. All right, uh, next is our teacher and leader effective effectiveness updates. Mr. Uh, Dr. Taylor, thank you. Thank you, Madam um, Chair, tonight and board members. And so um, I will be um, just sharing with you a couple of up updates from the teacher and leader effectiveness um, division. Where do I point? Okay, all right, I got it. All right, and so here um, you do see our new mission, mission and vision um, statement. And so today you will hear um, some of the work that we have been um, embarking upon to empower each student to graduate college and career ready. I will be focusing, of course, on goal area one, which is student achievement, and you will hear a little bit of each performance objective, but I'll live a little bit at the end under the first performance objective, which is to implement a coherent and viable curriculum. And so where have we been? Um, this particular school year, um, in particular, in light of the pandemic, um, we wanted to, to start with two main things, and so, in our work with um, principals, our vision for instruction has resonated with reviewing of great appropriate instruction and evaluating strong instruction so that um, we know that students have perhaps lost some learning or have unfinished learning due to the pandemic. We wanted to make sure that we did not remediate when that was not necessary. Um, we came in um, looking at our instructional focus areas. The executive officers have been working with principals around um, Build, building collaborative um, structures and data systems within schools. Um, this year we have picked back up performance reviews and performance reviews are an opportunity for each school to come um, before the central office and to share uh, really just the state of their school. And so they will participate in three rounds. We're in the middle of uh, um, round two um, as we speak. And that's an opportunity for central office to hear and to provide um, supports back to schools as necessary. Um, we have been participating in uh, various leadership development activities. I heard um, Ms. Garvin talk about that in the spotlight. Um, we have really been working on professional learning communities um, with the Start with the Crown um, series with Ken Williams, making action steps actionable. Um, that's going back to make sure that the school improvement goals that we have are aligned to the work that is necessary to move the needle with student achievement. And we um, are looking forward to continuing to work with um, Glissy um, this summer around some leadership development opportunities. And so um, we have completed our curriculum survey. And at the end, you're going to hear um, the bulk of this presentation talk about the results of that. Uh, we continue to monitor the curriculum um, through observations um, um, at, the, at the building level by principals, looking at instruction ensuring that it's grade appropriate. And we've had to revisit our classroom protocols. Um, what I mean by that is um, in a remote learning environment, we have grown very accustomed to 
um, instructing our students in a remote environment. And we know that the research really says that that does not have as, as huge, a, as large as an effect size as some direct instruction and differentiated instruction in the classroom. So principals are really um, focusing in on that to um, be more personable and to warm the environment for students in the classroom. And so where are we going? Um, we will take the curriculum um, feedback survey. We've held focus groups for all of the core content areas. Uh, you've heard Mr. Harper talk about um, our plan to put interactive panels in the classroom. Hopefully that will continue to strengthen the instruction and the engagement for students. Um, January is the month that we will begin looking at the 22 and yes, 22-23 school year. It's already time for us to begin that school improvement um, planning process. Uh, we will launch our extended learning. Um, that is opportunities for principals to really key in on students who still have, as we say, that unfinished learning, because we do um, still have the Georgia Milestones assessment that we will take um, this spring. And so we'll be keying in on that. And so here, um, where I wanna go now is really um, getting into the results of our curriculum um, feedback survey. And we have Policy IC. Um, Policy IC was written for the development of RCD. And there's an exhibit ICE1 that has a timeline for the, the development of curriculum for English, math, science, social studies, and identified electives. And we have pretty much completed that work. And so part of that exhibit outlines that we will annually um, perform additional um, revisions. And so what we wanted to ensure that we had um, adequate feedback so that we could make revisions that were based upon um, the information um, that we needed from teachers. And so you do see that there were 809 responses, so that was a really good response um, rate for this um, survey. And so just to explain the 792, we do have um, some people who responded to the survey for multiple content areas. So um, that is why the total number of 809 differs from the 792. But you do have the breakdown of teachers, um, administrators, and so on. The bulk of the participation was from teachers. And you also have the experience level of teachers that provided their feedback. Here, you see the grade levels that were represented. So again, we do feel that this is a, a pretty good um, representation across um, pre-K to 12. So the next question asked, have you participated on the curriculum revision um, process in the past? Um, the majority of our um, teachers and staff have not. Next two questions, do you have experience with writing curriculum and assessments either here or outside of the district? Um, and so again, what this shows us is that most people do not have um, experience with that. We went further to ask, have they received training? Um, and so again, you're able to see the responses there in terms of who, who has had training. On this slide, have you ever um, provided feedback on the curriculum? Um, this response here is that it was split about 50-50. And then we asked if you had um, provided feedback, do you feel that that feedback um, was considered? And so this is an area that we can certainly take um, into consideration as we move forward with annual review of the curriculum so that we can have more people feel like um, their, their feedback was considered in the revision work. We were able to see that the supports um, that were requested mainly was modeling, then professional learning, a lot of um, feedback of, around reviewing of answers to the assessment items, and then individualized support and some other um, opportunities for support that are listed. Then where we are, um, we, there were nine questions that were content specific. And here, the answers um, were always, sometimes, seldom, and never. And so what I did was to, I grouped the always and sometimes together. And so you're able to see in question one, the degree um, that the task allows students to connect to the, connect the standards to real world um, context. Question two, 
Um, do you feel that teachers have enough time to complete the teaching of units? And you'll see that um, some of the responses did um, drop here, and we do know some of that is due to COVID, um, some of the attendance issues um, due to the uh, pandemic. Was there a follow-up with them, I mean, I guess at large, to see what we could do to support them in this? Yes, and so the focus group, so what happened, um, Melvina is here, and I appreciate her. She led the focus groups, and so what the, fo well, first we did the survey, and so we had the 809 responses. Then what we did, um, in a moment, you're going to see there were about 22% of people who said that they wanted to further participate in the work, so about 174 people were invited to focus groups. All of those who wanted to come, we met with them um, four different days. Then we broke down into committee work to look at the recommendations. So several levels of, of review. Also, Dr. Taylor, if we, uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Absolutely. Chair, if I may. Um, when I'm seeing the numbers, I see science is at a 70.6 and social studies. Is it because maybe they didn't feel that way or they didn't complete the survey? I will look. We have um, some this additional eight, 809 work. 809 responses, right? Excuse me. This is 809 responses. It is. Right? And so okay. I have to look to see what that variance was with science. Um, as stated, teachers could participate in the survey multiple times if they taught multiple subjects. So I'll look to see what that response rate is um, by content. There's no problem to look at that in that way. Good question. Question three shows us to what degree are the, are the instructional tasks aligned to the standards? Four, to what degree are the tasks rigorous for the grade level? Question five, to what degree are the assessments aligned to the standards for each unit? Um, here again on question six, um, this is where we saw a lot of um, feedback where um, we need to revisit the strategies and activities um, to address students with disabilities and students um, who are ELL. You heard Mr. Kelly mention some strategies today that we can immediately use to address this area. Question seven, um, and this speaks um, really directly to the belief that teachers have around high expectations for students. And we asked if my students are given more rigorous work if the teacher felt like they would do it. And so this is a lower response rate than some of the other questions that we saw. So we'll definitely be taking a look to unpack um, this question. Um, to what degree do you believe the curriculum allows our students to be prepared for the next grade band? Um, this was an important question that ties directly with our um, mission and our vision statement. And so in, in English language arts, we did see a little bit of dip here. And we know that there is work to do in the area of literacy. And finally, question nine, uh, we asked um, how many people had participated in professional learning um, in support of implementation of the curriculum. And truly, this should be 100%. So if you're in front of um, students in our, our classrooms, um, you should have participated in professional learning. So that is another opportunity for us to take a look. So we concluded with um, asking if um, teachers or staff had participated in the curriculum process before, and we saw about 19% um, said that they had participated before. And then the next question asked if they would like to and um, this really just screams that a lot of teachers, um, they did not feel like that was something that they wanted to participate in. Um, the majority of teachers did not want to participate. However, there were 174 people who um, did express their desire to continue this work. They have been invited to focus groups and they will be um, participating with content committees. So I wanted to get in front of you um, this afternoon to just share um, this preliminary information with you because as we move forward, we will be going back to look at policy IC. We'll be going back to look at the exhibit ICE1, which was the timeline to write RCD because really that work is complete in terms of writing. Now we need to really focus on the revisions and what that work um, needs to look like based upon the recommendations that are coming out of the committee. Are there any questions at this time? All right. 
Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Taylor. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Will this, I, I do have one question, Dr. Taylor. Will this survey be given again before the end of the school year? I mean, or is that too early? I don't. Right, I believe that um, what would be necessary is that we, we do a, a survey annually. Um, right now, we do have opportunities for teachers to give feedback, and it is um, through a feedback form. Um, we have just noticed low participation with that, and so this gives us a, a more holistic um, look um, at, at the opinions or the perceptions of, of our staff. And so I would envision that it would be part of the annual review okay. of, um, of the curriculum. Well, I, you know, I, the only thing I know how to do is be honest. And um, I think there's a lot of healing to be done in this area. And those of us who have been around for a while know why. And, um, you know, when I was teaching, <laughs> they gave me a room, they gave me a key, and I did my work. I know I knew where to go get the standards and the and the curriculum and I designed pretty much for my science team on the sixth grade hallway I just hope that we don't get so bogged down again in that we don't allow teachers to be creative because by design teachers are very creative people mm -hmm. and I learned so much from my own peers on my hallway and I hope that I can only hope that they learned as much from me as I learned from them so I hope that we will focus on use leaning on each other when I come to work I know that I can lean on my science people on the sixth grade hall um, that's pretty much how I feel uh, but I just hope that we allow teachers to use their creativity because I think teachers really want to do that mm -hmm. because I'm a firm believer that I can get to point C in a different way that you get to C and they're both going to be very effective and efficient and they're going to work right and the curriculum does allow for that and one of the um, the positive things that I feel has come out of this process and you know I know there are some principals in the room but when we talk about our vision for instruction and reviewing great appropriate um, instruction, the executive officers have done a lot of work with principals this year, going out into the building, um, observing work samples. And um, I've heard comments back from principals that, hmm, this is really not that bad. So once they had an opportunity to really look and see mm -hmm. um, what RCD um, was, to be more intimate with it and to understand it better, um, they find that there is flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, I think that really just some rebranding. Mm -hmm. um, we have had some retention, some turnover. There have been some staff, teachers and administrators alike, who were um, not here in 2017, who are here now. And so there, there are some variants there that we need to go back and address so that people do get the big picture in terms of what it is and what it is not. Mm -hmm. um, but in my experience, there's certainly some things that we can improve upon, okay? But um, at the same time, there, there are a lot of flexibilities there, but it has to begin with us knowing what it is sure. and what, is, what it is not. No, I, I totally understand that and, and I, I appreciate that and I mm -hmm. appreciate you and the survey and I look forward to future, future uh, future surveys results. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. You all have a good afternoon. Thank you. This concludes our uh, agenda for tonight. So uh, I'll, uh, we uh, was just uh, told by Mr. Simmons that we do have a need to go into executive session. Um, but I'm going to give uh, the board. Uh, and I believe that's for the purpose of. Per for the purpose of. Compensation of personnel? Okay. Compensation of personnel. Oh, we're going to learn how to bake a chocolate cake or something. So, just kidding. All right. I'll allow my uh, colleagues for uh, board comments that we always do at the end of the meeting. Uh, Mr. Brown, I'll start with you if you have any. Thank you so much, Madam Vice Chair. Just want to say Happy New Year to everybody out there. January is a very exciting month. 
I learned how to say January from Mrs. Juanita Morris. And I just love using the word January. <laughs> Thank you. How do you spell that? No, just kidding. <laughs> Ms. Cook. Happy New Year. Hope all of you had a wonderful break and got some much needed rest. Many thanks to our teachers, to our staff, to our administrators, and most especially to our students for the work that you have done this first half of the school year. You've been very strong and very resilient, and we appreciate that, and we look forward to working with you for the second half of the school year. Thanks a million. Thank you, Ms. Cook. Mr. Doss? Yeah, I would just like to say thank you to everyone, and I hope that you had some rest and some great holidays and time with family. I realize that we're all challenged with the increase in some of the numbers and different things that are happening and having to go back to mask. Uh, but as you are continuing to be kind and continuing to uh, consider others that you uh, are able to um, look beyond some of the things that we don't like to do that we have to do to see the good that's being done for our students. So thank you. Uh, to begin, I want to wish everyone in the room a Happy New Year, and I do hope that everyone had a great break. Um, most of you know that this room has been rebranded a little bit. Um, we can see each other now. <laughs> and I just wanted to uh, acknowledge Mr. Ballard and his crew. When I was in here two or three weeks ago, I thought, Mr. Simmons said January 4th, but man, they got a lot to do and they got it done. So thank you, Mr. Ballard, if you're still here. I'm not sure he is, but I just wanted to publicly thank him. Um, also want to give a shout out to my Sun City family. Uh, and most of you know in the room that we had a family at Beaverbrook Elementary, which is in my district, District 5, that lost their home to a fire recently. And over the holidays, um, I live in a community that you give them a chance to give and they're going to give. So I through Clay Davis, I'm able to really communicate with everyone in Sun City through pods. And I sent out an email to my neighbors to, if they wanted to give to this family that is in my district, Beaverbrook Elementary, please leave a check, cash, gift card, whatever you want to do at my doorstep, so to speak. And we raised uh, $1,685 for this family. I presented it to Beaverbrook yesterday and I asked the counselor, Kim RV is her name, <laughs> she's so kind, and Dr. Mallard was there, and we called the mom while I was there, and I got to speak to the mom, and, and she's gonna make arrangements with the school to come by and pick up the funds, but I just wanted to give a shout out to Sun City because it's a very giving community, and um, the family was uh, overwhelmed and, and very appreciative, so I just wanted to say that. Also wanted to thank our support staff. As we go back to school tomorrow, I'm so thankful we can be face to face because we all know that kids do better face to face. Without our custodians, without our, without our bus drivers, without our nutrition workers, none of this could happen. Especially right now with our custodians that have, again, we're pretty much back to square one where we were when we finally went to school a year and a half ago. So give them a hug, tell them thank you. And I, I, I want to publicly thank all of our support staff because without them, none of us would be sitting in this room. So I wanted to do that tonight. Appreciate you being here. And uh, without any, any other business, I will adjourn this meeting, and then we'll go into executive session. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. Thank you. So, I mean, second. Motion to go into executive session by Mr. Doss, second by, by Mr. Brown. For the purpose of For the compensation purpose of, of personnel. Compensation of personnel. They must be talking about me. Just kidding. <laughs> Did I do good, Mr. Shepard? Let's all, let's all vote. Call okay, <laughs> call for the vote. Four to zero. Thank you so much. Appreciate y'all being here. Thanks. Great job, Madam Vice Chair. Shoot, I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs>